Hi there, it's Deborah Peters. Welcome back on this fabulous Friday from Los Angeles. I'm so excited to be able to do this show with you guys today. I've been kind of wondering what the next line of topics should be. We've talked a lot about getting your value proposition together and your business model and how to increase your revenue. And today I thought it would be really good just to talk about how to set yourself free. So that's our subject today. That's what today's episode is all about. Because each one of us has the ability, the capacity, and the power to set ourselves free. So thank you for joining me, Lorenzo. Nice to have you. I am curious if you're actually in Italy or if you're stateside, I'd love to know what time zone you're in. I think that would be just really fascinating. So go ahead and pop that in the chat bar if you don't mind. We've had uh, snow in Los Angeles this week, which is fascinating to me. I have never seen the um, snow cap, cap so low in the mountains, so it's been kind of fun. Hi, Sheldon Beyerback, nice to see you. And yes, I am going to do today's show on how to set yourself free. And this show is going to be short today, and I'll tell you why. I had a conversation with my publisher this week, and they're sharing with me this new marketing strategy that we are about to roll out. One of the things that I've been working on is getting more subscribers to my YouTube channel. So typically what I do, <clears throat> hi James, um, nice to have you join us today. Typically what I do is at the end of a show, I'll upload the episode onto YouTube. And so my focus has been for about the last year or so. Uh oh, I'm getting a lot of feedback. So, oh, there we go. Okay, I resolved it. Hi, Renee Dowling. Um, so yes, I've been uploading all of these episodes onto my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel is filled with tons of content and uh, of high value. So now it's about getting more subscribers. So I'd be really grateful if you guys all headed over to my YouTube channel at some point today, maybe even now, <laughs> and, uh, and actually subscribe. I'd appreciate that. So um, Robert Brown, nice to have you join us. I'm curious, if, are you in Spain? Where are you these days? I haven't talked to you in a long time. And Tefan, nice to see you. So Renee, are you in the desert? Are you out in Phoenix? I see there's a bunch of snow out there and I thought you were traveling through there. So kind of curious. You guys have to give me some love, you know, put some comments in the subject line. So I know that you're alive out there. So yeah, today's episode. Wow, today's episode um, was inspired by a client that I worked with yesterday. And um, the guy's a gem, let me just say that. The guy's a total gem. He uh, is going through a lot. And so I have a theory that when we go through a spiritual upgrade or if you wanted to use different terms like a process of letting go of an old paradigm or old belief systems that no longer serve us. To me, that's a spiritual upgrade. Um, our life might be kind of like a slingshot where we seem like we've gone backwards, like we've regressed in some way to being not as efficient or not as effective or not as powerful. And that's exactly what's happening with this client. Now, I want to tell you that I typically don't work with individual clients anymore. I mostly work with business owners, um, people that are managing teams of people. And, um, and I usually do a lot of group stuff. So boot camps and that sort of thing. And, but someone referred this gentleman to me, he's been to several therapists and he just wasn't able to get a breakthrough. So he came through the door, um, 
for his strategy session yesterday really angry um, and thinking that you know my life is my life sucks my finances are in the toilet um, you know I'm estranged from my wife and nobody loves me kind of like that that sad story that we all have an experience of um, and he wanted to work on his business. He really wanted to focus on, okay, let's build the business, let's make money. Um, I have to make money because I don't have any money. Um, I'm gonna go bankrupt if I don't turn this business around immediately and I was sent to you because I was told you're the best to do that and so you have to do this for me and you have to make this happen and I'm relying on you. If I'm gonna pay you, then you have to make sure that this works. And it was just a ton of projection and zero responsibility on his side. Um, and then he went on to talk about how, you know, his, his wife is this horrible person and he was calling her all sorts of names and how she's taking him to the cleaners over the money and the finances and the homes and the cars and, and how he misses his, you know, seven figure lifestyle and the pool and, and the country clubs and he just can't afford to even do anything anymore. I mean, it just went on and on and on. Um, and how his children don't like his wife now and nobody talks and she's just this really bad person and coming up next month when they go to arbitration that, you know, his attorney is just gonna hammer her. It was unbelievably negative. And, you know, it's no wonder that he's having all of these experiences because everything that's going on in his world, in his mind, is somebody else's responsibility and somebody else's fault. So I just kind of let him do his thing. You know, it's always good to let the client just kind of purge out all that surface level pain and suffering. And I had a an insight before the session, because I always I always take a minute to dial into the people that I'm going to be working with. I read energy, I read faces, you know, I, I can look at someone's face and I can see within the first 30 or 60 seconds what's going on with them on an unconscious level. And um, the way people breathe, their breathing patterns, uh, the way people talk, the cadence of their speech, um, how their body language shifts and changes when they're talking, their eye patterns, you know. Um, I'm sure if you've been coming on to my shows, you see them. I'm, I'm pretty animated. I got my hands going. My eyes are all over the place. I'm a really highly visual person. So a lot of the information that comes through when I'm doing the show is coming through from a visual perspective. I do not script any of this. I just decide in a you know before the show this is going to be the topic. This is what I would like you to all be able to take away as a as a as a positive resource or tool from this topic. And then you know I have so much experience with so many years of coaching and training and speaking around the world that it just comes through as a stream of consciousness. And with that, I can look at someone's picture. And I can tell where they're at in their consciousness and where they're at in their happiness and what kinds of thought patterns they have going on. So with all of that said, having a client come through the door and sort of do a mind dump like that is information for me that I use in the strategy session because it, it reveals to me exactly where they're at in their consciousness and what they're dealing with. So obviously this fellow is in a lot of pain, you know, he's feeling abandoned, he's probably really lonely. I think he's maybe one step or two away from needing some kind of antidepressant. You know, at some point, if he keeps on this path, he's going to put himself into that kind of a state. And we all do that to ourselves in some fashion. You know, we either lift ourselves up and we build ourselves up, or we put ourselves down and we tear ourselves down. And it's thought by thought, moment by moment. I've been there too. I've had that experience in my life. So it's not like that's as a theory for me. 
I, I think that I've probably bottomed out many times over the course of my lifetime where I felt like I destroyed all the good stuff and I was put myself into a really negative space and, and life had become a struggle. And it does not have to be that way. So in his demands upon me as his coach to make these things happen for him and to fix his issues, I simply just asked him to step back and realize that there's nothing outside of him that is keeping him or causing him to be in these circumstances, whether it's financial, in his relationships, in his health, all of it comes from one place and that comes from the relationship that you have with yourself. So how do you set yourself free from a relationship that's negative, that's a relationship of struggle, that is a relationship of lack, limitation and suffering? And I would say, you know, the first step is to congratulate yourself on having created something so um, imprisoning because as he was talking, I could take a pen on a piece of paper and I could draw a square. He just went from one negative area of his life to the next negative area of his life to the next negative area of his life back to the original negative area of his life. And he just kept going around. He had, has, had boxed himself into this limited space of perception and perceiving that he just had a wall on every side of him that was self-imposed. So coming in the door, you can imagine he's blaming his wife for his entire life collapse. So of course, if I were to allow him to, he would at some point blame me as a coach for not making him better. And this is why his last three therapists didn't work. Because a lot of people go to therapy and they think the therapist is going to fix them. And I say to that, first of all, there's nothing wrong with you. Okay, so there's nothing to fix. And number two, you've created everything you're experiencing right now in this moment. And so if you would like to have different experiences and different circumstances and different situations, then if it's meant to be, it's up to me. So what is it that you are focusing on that is continually driving your life down and creating lack and creating limitations? Because as soon as you start focusing in a different direction, you'll start to attract different kinds of people, different kinds of experiences. You'll find yourself going to different events. Your body will crave different foods. You know, all of the negativity will start to roll off. And what you have to learn to do is really be patient with yourself because that momentum doesn't change overnight. You know, it takes a minute to, to slow down the locomotive train and bring it to a, a stop and then take it the other direction. It's like, look what happened to the Titanic, right? It was just too big to turn that quick and it ended up crashing and burning basically. So if you use that as a metaphor in your life, start to be more patient with yourself. You know, it, all these little baby steps, add up every single day. So it's meditating in the morning as soon as you get up. It's meditating at night before you go to bed. It's writing your goals down on a card and reviewing those goals several times a day. Not just reading the card, but actually, and not just visualizing the goals, but getting into the feeling. Like, what would it feel like to have your income double or your income triple? What would it feel like to go on that vacation 
several times a year. What would it feel like to wake up next to the person that you love holding them in your arms every day? You get into that feeling and what ends up happening is your inner guidance system, your unconscious mind, the universe, God, whatever, starts to give you clues as to steps to take toward that outcome. People start to show up in your life, conversations start to be had around other possibilities that then contribute directly and indirectly to those desired outcomes. And then you start to actually celebrate the movement that you're making toward those outcomes and you actually start to enjoy the journey. So with the patience, you can enjoy the journey instead of you know white knuckling it, over controlling it and squeezing the life out of it to the point where the actualization of the desired outcome can't get through, you know, if, if you're impatient. So this was basically my process with him yesterday. And for someone that was demanding his business to grow and his income to grow um, really had to come from reconciling with his relationship with his wife. So what I had him do um, is start to write a letter to his wife. So let me just pause and say hi. Um, Tony and Frank and Thomas, thank you for joining us today. You got here right in the nick of time because I'm just wrapping up this show. I start at 12.30, you guys, except for the one day I didn't. But <laughs> for the most part, yeah, I start at 12.30. Um, and you can always catch the replay on my YouTube channel, which is at Neuroengineering Institute. So for himself to get to a place where he can have the life that he wants. He has to first forgive himself. And forgiving yourself can be a twofold exercise. And I've done this in the past too, um, with myself. So you can, you can forgive yourself and then also you can ask the other person for forgiveness. But you have to go into it with the expectation that they may not be able to say, I forgive you, right? So you can ask someone to forgive you, but their response to that request should not matter to you. You have to let go of your attachment to the outcome. You know, there's a saying that we have in the coaching world um, that goes like this, I'm holding the space for you to have what it is that you want. So what does that mean? So as a coach, um, what we wanna do is we wanna hold the space for our client to create and achieve and experience the thing that they're asking for. And in holding that space, there's no judgment, there's no timeline, there's no like, okay, it has to happen. Like there's no real expectation. It's just a very neutral kind of energy where we're holding the space for that person to be able to open their hearts to receiving what they say that they want. And I really believe that this gentleman, this client of mine, by going through the exercise of asking his wife for forgiveness, which I think is only step one, will enable him to set himself free from the way he's torturing himself. And then I think the second step is going to be for him to actually ask her to rebuild the marriage because he really does love her. And, you know, whenever we're pissed and angry at people after a relationship comes to a close, it basically means that the relationship's not done. You know, if I was to quote Joel Osteen, you know, he says, um, if it didn't end well, it ain't over. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can totally appreciate that. So something that I did about 10 years ago or so, um, I actually called up an ex and said, look, you know, I'm really sorry for my part in the demise of 
our relationship. And I apologize for um, the way I behaved around a lot of things, the way I spoke to you at times, the hurtful things I said and did. And uh, I just would like to ask for your forgiveness. Um, he couldn't hear me. I guess he's still pissed, but you know, I, I set myself free because whatever hold that, that relationship had on me and kind of percolating in the back of my mind. And I think about shit that I was mad about just completely dissolved and disappeared. So I know, I think we're never really angry at other people. I think we think we are, but I, I really, you know, in all the years that I've been coaching and I've coached a lot of people, I've coached a lot of crazy people and I've coached a lot of sane people. Um, and it's fun on both sides of the fence. And whenever people are angry at someone else, I don't think that that really is the case. I think we are just simply out of alignment with ourselves. And I think we're angry because we're out of alignment with ourselves because we know that we are infinite beings and we are capable of creating magnificence. And when we don't allow that to happen in our lives because we are fearful, we're doubtful, we think we're gonna get judged, we think we're gonna fail, um, it's outside of our realm of comfort zone, like whatever is going on. We become angry at ourselves for not allowing ourselves to be abundant, to be prosperous, to thrive. And then we point the finger at other people because when they're in our lives, they mirror back to us what we're not allowing ourselves to be, do, or have. And that can be a relationship that's negative in nature. And then the relationships that are positive in nature is when that other person holds a mirror up that keeps showing you your greatness, you know, that enables you to see your awesomeness and to step into your power and to move through these false concepts that you're not enough, that you don't deserve it, and that you can't have it. So that's my formula for setting yourself free. And um, I really encourage you to just take some time this weekend, have a nice conversation with yourself, take yourself out on a play date, you know, whatever you like to do. Personally, I like to go to the park and swing on the swings. Like that's my idea of a play date or um, go for a bike ride because I'm a big outdoor person. So I would always opt for that. And um, just go and enjoy your weekend. Go and enjoy the relationship that you have with yourself. All right, my friends, I'm starting to get that crazy feedback again. I don't know, it's twice it's happened during the show. So I hope there isn't an overlay of uh, vocals on this thing and then it turned out okay. So thank you for joining me today. Enjoy your Friday, enjoy the weekend. And uh, if you're up in Canada where it's cold or in the Midwest, start the fire and uh, take some time for yourself and curl up with some hot chocolate and set yourself free. Why not? What better time is there than now, right? All right, guys, love you. I'll see you on Tuesday at 1230. Make sure you come on time. I'm gonna start cutting these shows down to 15 minutes as per my, my publisher and the marketing plan that we have. So you're gonna to wanna to get on here early, get the morsels, get off and um, get back to your day. All right, take care. Bye.